Um, bad news from the Caribbean. Hurricane Fiona has unleashed her fury on Puerto Rico. The Category 1 storm has dumped more than two feet of rain, inundating the island with floods and landslides. The governor has described the damage as catastrophic. 90-mile-an-hour winds knocked out the power grid, putting one and a half million people in the dark. Dale heard reports on the devastation and where the storm is headed next. Officials in Puerto Rico say it's still too early to estimate the damage from a storm that was still punishing the island with torrential rain and historic flooding this morning. The powerful storm arrived Sunday afternoon, dumping up to 30 inches of rain, unleashing dangerous floodwaters, landslides, and knocking out the power grid. This man says he was sleeping when the roof of his home was ripped off and landed over there. In one mountain town, rushing water washed away this bridge. Power poles and a guardrail connected to the bridge were ripped from the ground by the current, taking everything connected to the structure downstream. The Category 1 storm came ashore with maximum sustained winds of 90 miles per hour, lashing the U.S. territory that's still recovering from a string of strong earthquakes and Hurricane Maria. Puerto Rico's governor says the experience with Maria helped the island prepare. That's why people are very responsive and they cooperate because uh, they, they remember, they still remember Maria. The White House approved an emergency declaration freeing up federal resources for emergency response and disaster relief efforts. Heavy rain and storm surge flooding is expected for the Dominican Republic as Fiona turns north. It's expected to stay clear of the U.S. East Coast, but could threaten Bermuda later this week. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Well, Operation Blessing was there after Hurricane Maria, and we're prepping our disaster t t relief right now uh, to evaluate the storm damage and, and what can we do about it. If you want to be a part of that, all you have to do is give to the Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund. You can write to us at CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463, or you can text OBDR, which stands for Operation Blessing Disaster Relief, OBDR to 71777. Be a part of helping those people in need. Well, in other news, President Biden made some very surprising statements in a recent interview, including whether or not he'll run for re-election. Ephraim Graham has that story and more from the CBN Newsroom. Ephraim? Gordon, in a wide-ranging interview on CBS's 60 Minutes last night, the president had some eye-opening responses to Scott Pelley's questions, including whether he'll seek a second term. It's much too early to make that kind of decision. I'm a great respecter of fate. And so what I'm doing is I'm doing my job. I'm going to do that job. And within the time frame that makes sense after this next election cycle here, going into next year, make a judgment of what to do. You say that it's much too early to make that decision. I take it the decision has not been made in your own head. Look, my intention, as I said to begin with, is that I would run again, but it's just an intention. But is it a firm decision that I run again? That remains to be seen. The president also raised eyebrows with his comments on U.S. support for Taiwan if China attacks reportedly departing from an official U.S. policy of not commenting on whether the U.S. will send military forces. But would U.S. forces defend the island? Yes, if in fact there was an unprecedented attack. So unlike Ukraine, to be clear, sir, U.S. forces, U.S. men and women, would defend Taiwan in the event of a Chinese invasion? Yes. The president has made similar statements in the past. The Chinese foreign ministry has logged a formal complaint with the U.S. over the president's remarks. Turning now to the war in Ukraine, leaders say there is more evidence of atrocities in territories liberated from Russian, the Russian army. A mass burial site with dozens of wooden crosses discovered in a forest near the city of Izium, including one mass grave holding 17 Ukrainian soldiers, some showing signs of torture. Officials also say torture chambers have been discovered in some areas. Unfortunately, what we see in Izium, 
what we saw in Bucha before, and we can only imagine the situation in Mariupol and other places which are still under uh, occupation. But it's tortures, rapes, killings, war crimes of a massive proportions. The Ukrainian government is documenting the evidence for war crimes trials. The atrocities are forcing millions to flee Ukraine. Six months ago, more than 100 Jewish orphans found short-term shelter in Israel. As Julie Stahl reports, the group is now moving forward with their lives in the Jewish state. A rabbi and his wife led the orphans, other children and staff out of Ukraine and found a safe landing outside Jerusalem. The sign behind me says, Bruchim Habaim. That's welcome in Hebrew. And these Ukrainian refugees have certainly felt welcome here at Nesarim for the last six months. The half year we were here was the most wonderful half a year. We didn't know there was such a thing in the world that they would receive us with such love. People really opened their hearts and their arms to us and just did whatever they could to help us out. So that was really amazing. And we feel that. It was very, very, very heartwarming. Rabbi Shlomo Wilhelm and his wife Esther led the Jewish community in Zhitomer, Ukraine for 27 years before fleeing the war. Now their entourage is leaving Nes Harim for the Israeli coastal city of Ashkelon, where they'll stay for at least a year. But it's very much a transition period, which means we always knew we wouldn't be able to stay here forever. So it was like we got used to life here and now we have to get ready to go on. There's no contradiction between good and bad. Everything good comes with difficulty. All of life is a challenge. All of life is about continuing to go forward. Everything new is like the peel of a seed. Before a tree starts to grow, the seed decays in the ground and then a new tree grows. CBN News first met the group shortly after their arrival in Israel. It came during the Purim holiday when Jews celebrate deliverance from evil as told in the Book of Esther. We've continued to follow them, such as when the kids' teacher from Ukraine made a surprise visit, and now for their farewell party. Gilly Maimon manages the Nesharim Field School and became hero and friend to the children. This was a very, very special project that Kakal did together with the Israelis. We will miss them and we wish them a lot of success on their new path. Irena Kabakova says she has mixed emotions. I feel, uh, you know, a bit sad, yes, because we are leaving, and happy, yes. I'm in a good mood. You know, I'm here for my children. I hope they will have great future here. Nes Harim is a field school of Karen Kayemetli Israel, Jewish National Fund, also known as Kakal. It's normally a place where youth groups and others come to hike and enjoy nature. Kakal is an organization of all the Jewish people. We say that every Jew here in the land and in the diaspora has a share in Kakal. Therefore, it was clear and natural that we would help the Jews in Ukraine. CEO Ben Ami says Kakal also is helping Jews still in Ukraine with humanitarian aid. It was our privilege to fulfill part of the goals, part of the aspirations of Kakal. It was exciting, it was humane, and it really emphasized how important Kakal is, not only for Israel, but for Jews around the world. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Nes Harim, Israel. The world bids a final goodbye to Queen Elizabeth II today. Hundreds of world leaders attending the service in London. O oh death, where is thy sting? O oh grave, where is thy victory? People of loving service are rare in any walk of life. Leaders of loving service are still rarer. The ceremony beginning with a procession from Westminster Hall to Westminster Abbey. King Charles III, alongside his brothers and sisters and the grandchildren, follow the casket. Authorities expected up to a million people to crowd the streets of London for that final goodbye. President Biden and the First Lady in attendance as well. Last night, signing the official condolence book and joining other leaders for a reception at Buckingham Palace. She was the same uh, in person as, she, as her image. Decent, honorable, 
and all about service. All this week, hundreds of thousands stood in lines up to five miles long to file past the Queen's casket. Gordon, back to you. Well, she made a vow of a lifetime of service. She did that when she was young, when she was just in her 20s. And here she fulfilled it. What an amazing legacy to say, yes, I'm going to stick by my vow. I'm going to fulfill what I pledged to do. And she did it with grace. She did it with elegance. But most of all, she did it with perseverance. Artifacts, stories, artwork, and interactive technology, they all combine to tell the history of the Jewish people in the largest museum of its kind in the world. Julie Stahl takes us on a tour of Anu, the Museum of the Jewish People in Tel Aviv. Anu, it means us. That's the name of the new Museum of the Jewish People in Tel Aviv. Its goal? tell the story of God's chosen people from Abraham until today. It's the biggest museum of its kind in the world. So whereas there are literally hundreds of Jewish museums all over the world, this is the only one that attempts to tell the whole story. The museum combines artifacts, stories, artwork, and innovative technologies to tell the good and sometimes difficult history of the Jewish people like never before. CEO Dan Tadmore believes this story is relevant to both Jews and non-Jews. We refer to Judeo-Christian values as the bedrock of Western society. They are Judeo-Christian values. It's the things that we share. It's the values of the Bible. The museum covers 72,000 square feet of exhibition space spread over three floors. One aspect features interactives. So does your name come from the Bible? So let's punch in Jonathan. Here we go, and you will be happy to learn that Jonathan struck down the Philistine prefect in Geba, and the Philistines heard about it. Saul had the ram's horn sounded throughout the land. And this one shows how to make ethnic this Jewish foods from around the world. I think I'm going to go for the stuffed leaves. Okay, let's go. So you get your list of ingredients, wow. but now you actually need to work. Uh-oh, okay. You begin by by putting the rice in the bowl. So drag the rice into the bowl. Oh, okay. Add the ground now, beef. Add the ground beef. Great. Now you're gonna have to grate the onion. So grate the onion, go back and forth on the grater. So this is fun, but it's also, you know, you come away with a recipe. More than 50 original films help tell the various parts of the story. We're now on the historical wing. And this wing is a chronological track that begins with Abraham and ends with the establishment of the state of Israel and beyond. It's a seven minute huge projection that tells the entire story of Jewish migrations through the ages. The path begins with the sixth century BC exile of the Jewish people to Babylon. Until then, all Jews resided in one place. So for 2000 years and the present, Jews always live in diverse places and proceeds to include the first believers in Jesus. And of course, the first Christians considered themselves Jews because they were. And so this is that part of history. This diorama tells the story of the competition between this newly founded religion, the cross, in front of a synagogue. Visitors can learn about the Inquisition, how Jews in Spain were forced to convert to Christianity. Even though the dark chapters in Jewish history like the Holocaust are part of the story, Tadmore says the museum is about Jewish life. When we look at Jewish history and Jewish life, we refuse to do so solely from the position of the victim. Jews have not only been persecuted and survived. Along the way, we've thrived and flourished. The first Jews in North America established the first synagogue there in Newport, Rhode Island. This is a replica of a letter written by George Washington to the Jewish community of Newport, in which he basically says, the children of Abraham will always have a home in these United States. Wow. Tadmore's favorite item is here in what they call the Hallelujah Hall, dedicated to synagogues around the world throughout the ages. Most of the congregations represented are still in use. This was one of the biggest synagogues in Warsaw, Poland, Blown up by the Nazis, the leadership hid the holy items before the Nazis arrived and then secretly sold them to feed the Jews in the ghetto. 
So this is the actual object from a synagogue that was destroyed by the Nazis over 70 years ago. And it miraculously survived because a Swedish philanthropist acquired it. It somehow made its way to Stockholm, probably because you were able to dismantle it and send it, and it has survived. The synagogue didn't. The congregants of the synagogue didn't, but the menorah did. And so you asked me about my favorite object. Tad Moore says the museum is so big you can't see it all in one day, but that only encourages people to return again and again to interact with the never-ending story of the Jewish people. Julie Stahl, CBN News, the Museum of the Jewish People, Tel Aviv. What an incredible museum and an incredible experience. But take a step back from the museum. Uh, how has God shown himself uh, through the millennia? It's the only people on the planet that have survived as a culture for 4,000 years. The closest one to the Jewish people are the Han Chinese, and they go back to roughly 2,500 to 500 B.C. You, you look at that. How does a people survive, a culture survive, even when they don't have their homeland, even when they're scattered all over the face of the earth? This is God's story and his, his prophecy that they would return, that the desert would bloom again, and that once again Israel would be a light to the nations, an example of uh, what happens to a people when you devote yourself to the service of God. It's an incredible story, and I like to underline, it's God's story. After Heath lost his job, he and his wife Louise were living hand to mouth. The lowest point was when the couple had to go on food stamps. Well, then one morning, Louise discovered a scripture that took them from financial famine to abundant living. Heath and Louise Jarvis of Naples, Florida, have been married nearly 25 years and have seen their share of highs and lows. In 2008, Heath, an award-winning songwriter and worship leader, lost the job he loved. Basically, they had decided they wanted to go a different direction uh, in their praise and worship. We had a very uh, amicable uh, departure. Um, they gave me a very nice severance, and uh, I just figured, okay, well, that's fine. There's other jobs. I'll find another job really soon. Five years before, Louise had left her well-paying job as a chemical engineer to be a full-time mom for their two children. It was a commitment she didn't want to give up. I was going to be a stay-at-home mom. My mindset was I was going to homeschool my kids. I was going to be the one to put the meals on the table and, you know, be there for my kids every time they came in. Over the next few months, as Heath searched for a job, his severance and their savings were depleted. Then. The Great Recession of 2008 hit. Nobody was hiring. The lowest point for me was the day we went on food stamps. We were literally hand to mouth, paycheck to paycheck. It was really tough. We didn't know what we were going to do. One morning while Louise was reading her daily devotional, the scripture passage Genesis 26 caught her attention. Verse one says there was a famine in the land. And I thought, that's us. We're in famine. It's a financial famine, but we're in famine. And I got down to verse 12 where Isaac sowed and he reaped a hundredfold the same year. And I thought, wow, we don't need just a little bit. We need a hundredfold. And she shows me her Bible and Louise said, this is our answer. We need to give our way out. We decided, all right, we're going to take God at his word and we're going we're gonna to sow our way out of this. Malachi chapter 3, it says, test me. And I thought, Lord, I'm going to test this. I'm going to let you prove to me that you are the provider that you say you are. We knew that we had to let go in order to plant seed for a greater harvest. They took what jobs they could find and faithfully tithed off anything they received. Any opportunity for income that came in, the first check we wrote was the tithe check. You know, the Bible says that for a tither, God will rebuke the devourer. We were determined we're going to keep our finances, our provision protected. They kept trusting God as Louise continued to track their finances. Within four months, 
the Jarvises saw their income grow by $10,000. And we thought, great, we need to look for another opportunity to sew. The Jarvises got off food stamps and continued to look for full-time work. Twice, they gave their first paychecks as offerings and saw a hundredfold return each time. In January of 2011, Louise's former employer offered her a two-month contract that she could work on remotely. And I thought, what a blessing. I can still be a homeschool mom, stay at home with my kids, and work from home. Louise was soon offered more contracts, and that wasn't all. We had sowed a seed of $2,040, and by the end of 2011, we had brought in $204,000. That job, which was supposed to last two or three months, she ended up working for nine years. Six years later, God called them both into full-time ministry. Heath now pastors Faith Life Worship Center. I love it. I, <laughs> I get the greatest joy uh, leading our church in worship and uh, delivering the Word of God to them uh, every week. He and Louise love sharing their experiences of God's faithfulness. Sow the seed, see the result. God's word works every time. It always comes back to us, good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over. You've got to trust God. You've got to trust his word. And if you just put his word to work in your life, you're going to reap the same result. Put the principle into practice. And sometimes that's very hard. When I hear the story of Heath and Louise, I, I, I marvel the first paycheck. They said, we're going to give this first fruit. We're going to sow again. For many people, that would be really hard. And, and here they are saying, we want to do this cheerfully because we know the principle. When you put the principle into practice, we know it's going to work. And it's that principle that Jesus laid down that you can have 30, 60, 100-fold increases because you were careful to sow. And here they are looking for new opportunities to give. And then God always wants to give back. Here's the scripture that they used, and here's what they based it on. It's from Genesis 26, and the context is there's a famine in the land. Now, who goes out? What farmer goes out and sows in the middle of a famine? The reason there is a famine is there's no rain. But that's not what Isaac did. There was a famine in the land. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Well, Heath and Louise took that to heart and said, we're going to sow. It may seem like a famine. Uh, we may be unemployed. We may be looking for employment opportunities at home. We're looking, and in that process, we're going to sow. And when they sowed, they reaped. You just saw a miracle story of what God will do when you take him at his word, when his blessings will literally overtake you. That's the promise from Deuteronomy. It's not some kind of get rich quick thing. It's certainly not some heavenly slot machine. Uh, you put in a quarter and, and, and move the arm down and suddenly everything works. No, it's a lifetime commitment where you say, I'm going to follow God no matter what. I'm going to live life His way. When you do it His way, that's when the increase happens. If you want to start doing that, join the 700 Club. You're a part of everything we're doing around the world, whether that's helping Ukrainian refugees, uh, staging for the hurricane that just hit Puerto Rico, the floods in Kentucky, the number of people being fed every single month right here in America, millions of pounds of food going out to food banks across the nation, all being done in your name when you're a member of the 700 Club. Why? A portion of every gift goes into the work of Operation Blessing. Another portion goes into the work of CBN International to preach the gospel around the world. You're a part of everything we do when you join with us. 
Now, when you join at $20 a month, we'll send you a copy of my latest teaching on the Lord's uh, the Lord is my shepherd, the Psalm 23. If you give at 700 Club Gold, we'll send you three copies of it. And if you give at 1,000 Club, and that breaks out to $84 a month, we'll, you'll receive five copies. So you have plenty to share with your family, uh, with your friends, uh, and you can be a part of sharing this wonderful teaching to those around you. Now, it's a teaching on one of the best love passages in the Bible. 23rd Psalm. Verse by verse, you'll learn the Hebrew meaning behind the words, and you'll discover the promises, protection, and provision available to you. I want to do a meditation on the Psalm of David, Psalm 23. Gordon Robertson presents The Lord is My Shepherd, a Psalm of David. Each verse is a guide for us in our life. And it's a beautiful illustration for me of how Jesus leads us. What happens when we fully embrace the Lord is my shepherd? Get the Lord is my shepherd, the latest audio teaching from Gordon Robertson. Call now or go to CBN.com. Infested with insects, filled with dirt, and even the body of a dead animal. That was the only water a boy named Antony had to drink. It made him so sick he had to be hospitalized. Then one day, you 700 Club partners brought fresh water to Antony's village, and now he'd like to thank you himself. Antony lives with his family in a village on the side of a mountain in a remote part of Honduras. The greatest need of the entire community is clean water for drinking and cooking. This is Antony's dad, Antonio. The water that we have consumed has never been clean. The hoses don't have any filters. We see insects and dirt in the cloudy water. Currently, water comes to families via several hoses connected to surface springs that collect in small ponds. The water source is exposed and contaminated with bacteria, which can cause illness, especially in children. I remember drinking the water. I felt a great pain like burning in my stomach. I felt nauseous. Another day, the pain in my stomach was so bad that I cried a lot. Antonio told us his son got so sick that they had to rush him to a clinic, which was more than an hour's drive from their home. The transportation, treatment, and medicines for that one visit cost Antonio nearly half a month's wages. The doctor told me that he had developed parasites because of the type of water that he has been drinking. Then Operation Blessing came to the community to help. First, we identified a new water spring higher in the mountain. We built a retaining wall and, with help from the community, we laid pipes, built a 5,000-gallon storage tank, and added purification. Finally, we ran pipes to the homes in the community, including Antony's. The water that Operation Blessing gave us is very refreshing. It is as cold as if they had put ice in it. I want to thank God and then thank the donors of Operation Blessing. For us, this has been excellent. My family and everyone in the community are happy because of the water that God sent us. The heartfelt gratitude of this little family is something special. And I love the fact that Antony says in the end, the water that God gave us. You see, everywhere we go in your name, we also do it together in the name of Jesus. And these people know that God blessed them because of your generosity, that you said yes when you were given the opportunity. Listen, providing clean drinking water is just one of the things that 700 Club members do. We're at work around the world every day, all day. If you aren't joining with us right now, it's a wonderful day to begin that journey. 65 cents a day, $20 a month makes you a 700 Club member. Wouldn't you like to know that you are touching and changing lives right at the point of need? And these lives are being impacted for all eternity by your compassion and your kindness. To join the 700 Club, it's so simple. Our number's toll free. It's right there on your screen, 1-800-700-7000. Just call and say, I want to join the 700 Club and look at the options that you have. I'm talking to you about a general membership, which is the top line, but you could 
could also become a 700 Club Gold member. That's a gift of $40 a month. Or go up to the 1,000 Club at $84 a month. Our 2,500 Club partners join us at $209 a month. And then our founders, $5,000 a year. That works out to $417 a month. Do it now. Many of you watch this program and you've watched it for years and you've just never, you mean to, but you've never gotten up and gone to the phone. Do that today. Call and say, I want to join the 700 Club. And when you do, we want to say thank you by sending you Gordon's teaching, The Lord is My Shepherd. I know this is a psalm that most of us know if we haven't memorized it, but it's also a psalm that speaks so richly to who God is and what he wants to be in our lives. And we want you to have this. I think it'll be a real blessing to you. So please call now, bless others, and you'll be blessed. Gordon? Now, I was a frontline worker during the COVID pandemic. This nurse contracted COVID herself and went into respiratory failure. As a single mother, she had no way to feed her family of five until you came to their rescue. Early in the COVID-19 pandemic, Nye worked as a nurse. Then she wound up a patient herself when she went into respiratory failure. And they said I was gone for about eight seconds. The doctors believed that I had COVID and that turned to pneumonia. The single mom had to quit working as a nurse because she couldn't risk further exposure to COVID. It was a very scary time for me not to be able to support my kids. So we were just honestly living off of the savings that I had accumulated. Then once that started dwindling, I start panicking. Then her pastor at Freedom Church of Virginia Beach told her the church was starting a food pantry with the help of Operation Blessing. There, Nye received the food she needed to feed her family. The food pantry actually helped me and my kids a lot. It gave us nourishment, and God really answered my prayers. Nye's pastor gave her the opportunity to run the food pantry, and she seized the chance to give back to the community again. Anything for the Lord. When we partner with Operation Blessing, it opened opportunities for me to do what I know the Lord put me on this earth to do, and that's to meet others that are in need. Even though I got the opportunity to feed others, he was feeding my family too. Thanks to Operation Blessing Partners, Nye's family made it through the rough patch. Now Nye is back to working full-time as a nurse and her family is thriving. The Lord has carried me through so many storms. He has hovered me in so many ways. I'm filled with so much joy and happiness. You can be a part of it. You can be a part of helping people right here in America and around the world by joining the 700 Club. If that's you, if you want to be a part, give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. If you're already a member, I encourage you to go to 700 Club Gold. That's $40 a month. 1,000 Club is $1,000 a year. That breaks out to $84 a month. At whatever level, when you call, make sure you ask for Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving. Bank doing all the work, and we can send as our gift to you, Power for Life, monthly teaching CDs. So if you'd like those, ask for Pledge Express when you call. You can also go to CBN.com. When you give monthly on the Internet, you automatically sign up for Pledge Express. We have a new thing where you can text to give. Text the letters CBN to 71777. It'll direct you to a monthly giving page, and you'll automatically sign up for Pledge Express. Now, when you become a CBN partner, we'll also send you our newest CD, The Lord is My Shepherd. This teaching will take you on a journey through the 23rd Psalm. You'll see how the Good Shepherd meets every one of our needs, and you'll discover what it means to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Welcome back to the 700 Club for this CBN news break. Theaters are extending the run of a pro-life film after its successful performance at the box office. Life Mark is based on a true story of choosing adoption over abortion. Actor and producer Alex Kendrick told CBN's Faithwire the film is leading to conversations about the gospel in theaters. Out of 1,500 theaters, 1,100 have asked to continue showing Life Mark at least another week. CBN Superbook team in Ukraine continues to spread the gospel online despite the ongoing war. 
The Ukrainian Superbook team recently launched a Facebook and Instagram page. The third season of Superbook in Ukraine was also posted on the YouTube channel, along with a new special series of motion capture episodes featuring Gizmo and a Bible character. The new series is using the latest technology to animate Gizmo and reach more children with the gospel. You can learn more about what CBN is doing around the world by going to CBN.com slash international. In 2021, the Christian music trio Kane earned a Dove Award nomination for Best New Artist. Their songs have been streamed millions of times. And yet, this band almost ended before it began. Just a few years ago, singer Taylor Kane was infected with a virus that nearly destroyed her voice and came very close to stealing her life. See my hands and look at my It's okay if it's hard to believe. Taylor Kane is one of three siblings that make up the popular contemporary Christian music group, Kane. But there was a time when Taylor thought she may never sing again. In 2015, she went on a mission trip to Honduras. And the plan was to repair um, things in their villages, just to be around and whatever they needed, that's what we were gonna do. And so we just, we got to sing songs about Jesus. By the time she returned home to Alabama, she began feeling ill. It was alarming how much I was vomiting. Um, I would stand up out of the bed and I knew I had my routine of like, this is, I couldn't keep anything down. Her parents eventually took her to a hospital in Huntsville where doctors tried to diagnose the source of the virus that was now attacking her kidneys and immune system. The ER doctor called my parents back and he was like, okay, here's the deal. So your creatinine level, and they said right now you're at an 8.2 and your kidneys fail after three. It was a condition called acute tubular necrosis, uh, which uh, can cause severe kidney failure. We see it commonly. In her case, I think it was likely caused by severe dehydration. That's when we were just felt devastated that, oh, wow, we are, we're in serious trouble. Taylor's parents, her then boyfriend, Stephen, and her siblings began contacting people to pray. It really grew like wildfire. Thousands and thousands, literally around the world, were praying for her. There was this cloud hovering over the whole group. We know the God that we sing about. We know the God we hope that comes through, but here we are for the first time, like standing at the edge of the Jordan. There was one night when my family, they were really tough and they, you know, we all kind of had the same like faith, just faith only. And, but then everybody just started to cry and it, I just was like, what am I missing? Like, am I dying? Is this really happening? They came into the, the room in the middle of the night and they like turned her on her side because her blood pressure had spiked and they were, they kept saying septic, septic. She, I think she's getting septic. I remember leaving and going into the hallway and just crying because it just felt like more bad news. Although things did not look hopeful, Taylor's family continued to stand in faith for her healing. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. We just said, this is not what we see, this is what we want. And we want Taylor to be healed, and, and, and uh, not because Taylor's special, but because God wants us all healed. At one point, a nurse began relating the possible outcomes. When you shoot for the most the most devastating thing, it robs you of your hope. They sent this lady in, bless her heart, to prepare us for a lifetime of dialysis. And I kept trying to tell her, man, we just can't hear this right now. She kept just going with it. No, I think you need to hear this. No, I think you need to hear this. Finally, I just said, not another word. Taylor was scheduled for a surgery to install the port for her dialysis. But before they did, they did one more kidney biopsy. Taylor was being prepped for a permanent portal in her neck to have to have chemotherapy and dialysis the rest of her life. And this medicine was going to destroy every dream my girl could possibly have. It was going to make her hair fall out. It was going to make her gain weight, ruin her voice as a singer, and make her sterile so she couldn't have children. Even if I got a transplant, that wouldn't stop the, the autoimmune. My body was attacking my kidneys. Just before she went to surgery, the doctor came in with the results from the biopsy. Mom runs out into the hallway and then she comes back and she's like, he just 
told me he canceled your surgery. He was like, your kidney biopsy came back completely clean. Your kidneys look, nev they've never been better. And he was like, you're gonna recover on your own. I remember I stood up on my hospital bed with my IV bag, just we were hugging and screaming. It was like just the biggest celebration. You know, it was a real emotional moment for him. Uh, I know there were a lot of people praying for her at the time, and I, th I think those prayers were answered. In 2020, the group signed a major record deal and have since landed two number one hits and won a K-Love Award for Breakout Single of the Year. She, along with her brother and sister, are singing and ministering around the world. And I'm just so thankful that we had the word in us and we had the prayers of people surrounding us to fight that. To that point, our music career was everything we cared about. And in that moment, we had to, to reprioritize our lives and say like, okay, well, if she cannot, we won't without her, so we won't. Mm, yeah. Because we'd rather have her than whatever comes from music. My spirit is with you wherever you go. You have a purpose. I am beyond thankful that for the last six years, I have been singing nonstop and what the enemy tried to take from me, it's like it has just rocketed. Prayers work, they work. Ask people to pray for you and like really believe, really believe that anything is possible. The good is at the end. Anything is possible. God is big, he's very big, he loves you. We want to take some time in our program today to pray for you and to remind you of how big he is and how much he loves you and how able he is to touch you right at your point of need. This should encourage you. This is Dee. She sent in an answer to prayer from Salome Springs, Arkansas. She had broken fingers and osteoarthritis for years. She was praying for someone else when she was praying for someone else, that's often the ticket, isn't yeah. it? When she heard Gordon say, there's someone who has swelling in your knuckles and inflammation throughout your hands. It's difficult for you to grip things. God is healing you and giving you new mobility. Dee thought to herself, that's me. She stretched her arms straight up in the air and said, I accept that healing, Lord, and I thank you in the name of Jesus. She said immediately she began to feel a tingling and a warmth in both of her hands. The pain she had experienced for 35 years, 24-7, was gone. She can even open water bottles again. <laughs> Praise God. It's one of the keys to prayer. You find it at the end of the book of Job. When Job prayed for his friends, then God restored everything that he had lost. When we start looking at the needs of others, praying for them, praying for God to bless them, well, that's when the blessings come to us. Well, here's Judy from Colorado Springs, and she had a blessing. She was watching Terry, uh, the 700 Club, and then Terry said, there is someone with polyps in her nose, and they are gone. Amen. <laughs> Then I added the same person, you've had surgery last year on your nose, and you need to know they're gone. Well, two weeks later, Judy went to see her uh, ear, nose, and throat doctor, and he examined and told her the polyps are gone. <laughs> and then she told him about her miracle. Tell people about your miracles. Tell people what God has done for you. Uh, let let stand and, and in the assembly and declare the good things that God Almighty has done for you. It gives everyone hope to believe. And that's the key to the story we just watched. Here's someone, well-meaning um, member of the healthcare community, on assignment from doctors. Well, we need to prepare you for life ahead. And this is all the bad things that are going to happen. And this is what you need to do, and you need to prepare yourself for it. I love what the father said. He came in and, and no, not one more word. You're not going to rob me of my hope. You're not going to rob me of my faith, because faith is the substance of things hoped for. And he got it right. We're going to look not just, you know, at, at, at this thing as, as some kind of you know, problem that we just have to accept. No, we want a different reality. We want something different for our daughter. 
We want to claim the promises of God. He promised to heal all our diseases. We're going to claim that. In that, you're walking into one of the great promises that you find in the Lord's Prayer. This is a prayer we've all memorized, and, and we can sort of speed pray it. But when you understand the impact of it, that our Father who art in heaven, your kingdom come, your dominion come. What does kingdom mean? That's where the king's rules are being obeyed. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm. Look at heaven. Anybody sick? Anybody need dialysis? Anybody have cancer? The answer is no, because that's where God's will is being done. We have the authority given to us by Jesus Christ to move heaven to earth, that God's will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let's do that and do it right now. Lord God Almighty, we come to you. And yes, your name is holy. Holy are you. You who want to provide all our need, who want to heal all our diseases, who want to forgive all our iniquities. Lord, the number of times we stray from you, you always restore, you always forgive, you always heal, you always provide. For you are our Father who art in heaven. Lord God, let your heaven, let your will be done in our bodies, in our lives. We ask for it now. We ask for in faith, believing that you answer prayer. And we receive it now in Jesus' name. There's someone, you just have a, a horrible, I, I want to say screaming headache right now. It's blinding you and these things recur. In Jesus' name, that headache be gone and afflict no more. Let everything with the blood vessels be normal. Everything be normal within your brain. In Jesus' name, be healed and may they never return. Terry? Yeah, someone else, you have a condition with your lungs. Um, it's been, you've had it for some time. And it, it, you'll know this is you because the term that's used by doctors, is, it has something to do with little sacks in your lungs. God is healing that condition for you. Instead of multiplying whatever has been the problem, it's going to begin to diminish until you are fully and completely healed in Jesus' name. Someone you've got a, a problem with your esophagus where it spasms and it, it's very difficult for you to swallow. And it's, it's right behind your sternum. I don't know what happened, whether it was enlarged or, you know, you, but you've had difficulty swallowing in Jesus' name. Let everything with your esophagus be normal. No more uh, spasms, no more problems with it. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Yes, someone else, you've also had a throat injury that's affected your vocal cords. Your voice is raspy when you speak. God's healing that for you right now, literally healing what has been damaged for a long time. It's all being restored in Jesus' name. There's a woman, your name is Helen. You just got diagnosed with stage three cancer. God is declaring you cancer free now. In Jesus name, amen. If you've been healed, let us know. Let us share in your good report. Call us 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word from Jeremiah. I will heal my people and will let them enjoy abundant peace and security.